The Koffler Gallery is proud to present the world premiere of a heart-wrenching and fascinating exhibition, The Synagogue at Babinyar, Turning the Nightmares of Evil into a Shared Dream of Good. Opening on the eve of Yom HaShoah, April 17th, and running until November, the multidisciplinary exhibition tells the bittersweet story of the Babinyar Synagogue, which stands on the grounds of the first large-scale massacre of the Holocaust in 1941. Experience the full historical, political, artistic, and spiritual context of this incredible monument for the first time. The exhibition is free of charge. To learn more, visit CofflerArts.org. God save the king! That was one of the key moments in King Charles III's coronation ceremony on Saturday. Did you watch any of it? Did you get up early and have tea and crumpets? Or maybe you don't care all that much about the new king of the Commonwealth. He is also the king of Canada officially now. Whatever your opinion, there is quite a Canadian Jewish angle to this story. And today we'll chat with two high-ranking Canadian Jewish leaders who played their parts. Now, as you've likely heard, since the coronation was scheduled for Saturday, it made it tricky for observant Jews to attend in person, let alone watch on TV. But the new monarch was so eager to cultivate good relations with people of diverse faiths that he went out of his way to help Britain's chief rabbi, Sir Ephraim Mervis, be present on Charles's big day. The rabbi and his wife got to sleep over Friday night at Charles and Camilla's palace, called Clarence House. It's just a 15-minute walk from Westminster Abbey, and so the next morning they could walk to be at the service. And by the way, British rabbis are required to attend a church even on Shabbat if their king commands them to. Now, Manitoba's new lieutenant governor, Anita Neville, arrived in London a few days before the coronation. She went there to be formally introduced to Charles in person as his new representative in Manitoba, because she was sworn in just a few months ago. You'll hear her impressions of the new king. That's coming up later in the show. But first, we'll check in with Ontario's Solicitor General, Michael Kersner. He received rabbinical advice so that he could attend his government's official ceremony in Toronto on Saturday, marking the coronation. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Monday, May the 8th, 2023. Welcome to the CJN Daily, a podcast of the Canadian Jewish News, sponsored by Metropia. Michael Kersner was elected last summer as part of Premier Doug Ford's progressive conservative government. Kersner's an observant Jew, but Ontario's ceremony was scheduled for 11.15 on Saturday morning outside of the legislature building in downtown Toronto, which is far away from his house. It's also outside the A-roof, which is a specially designed area of the city where observant Jews are permitted to carry things on Shabbat. But Kersner said he felt it was important to be there as the only Jewish member of the Ontario government and the only one who wears a kippah. So on Saturday, when they raised the new royal flag and sang God Save the King and fired a 21-gun salute, Kersner was there. I spoke to him Sunday after he got back home. Well, thanks, Ellen. You know, uh, I think I'm only the second person uh, who had uh, an issue of going to a coronation event Uh, somewhere in the world uh, that we know about. The first was uh, Sir Ephraim Mervis, the chief rabbi of Britain, of the UK, who had to stay over at Clarence House. And he was at uh, Westminster Abbey yesterday as commanded by the monarch. And similarly in Ontario, as the only Jewish cabinet minister, as a Jew uh, who is uh, Shomer Shabbat, I had a problem because it's about 14 kilometers away. So I was commanded by her honor, the lieutenant uh, governor and, uh, and the cabinet office to be there yesterday when we had a special ceremony uh, for the coronation. And it was a great honor to be there, Ellen. It wasn't easy, but it was a great honor. What ended up happening is as I spoke to different rabbis in the city, I was trying to figure out how to engineer this. And Ellen, one of the things I found out, because I've never gone downtown on Shabbat, is that the Arif stops at uh, DuPont. So that presented its own challenges over and above everything else. But- uh, I didn't know I, that. I did not know that. Yeah, I, did, I 
didn't know that until Rabbi Grossbrom of Chabad Labavitch, a dear friend of the family, explained it to me and educated me. So what I ended up doing was staying down at Avenue and Bloor in a hotel. And I was dropped off uh, on Friday and, and uh, just before Shabbat. And, and on Shabbat, I had to walk down with my security advisor and uh, my staff to the event. And I stayed with my kippah on, uh, something I'm really proud of wearing each and every day. And it's meaningful to me. And be there for, for the event and staying afterwards, actually, uh, for a while and and, you know, seeing about 25,000 people that came to Queen's Park, what was meaningful to me was twofold. Uh, firstly is, I'm a proud Jew. I'm a proud Jew. Uh, anybody that has seen me in the legislature knows that I've been fighting each and every day for our Jewish community and for all of Ontario, especially on the public safety side as Solicitor General. And secondly, something that perhaps I learned from uh, my bubby, Sarah Kersner, she, she, uh, she and, and my other grandmother, uh, Tilly, Tilly Mandel, believed in the monarch. They believed there's a significance in, in recognizing something, uh, something special. Did you ever meet King Charles or the Queen? You know, I'll tell you a funny story. I remember in the mid '70s, uh, and and again, this is this is this is true. Uh, the Queen was in Toronto with, with Prince Philip, and I remember my mom taking me to uh, Avenue Road, just south of Wilson. And I remember vividly staying on the west side of the street, just south of Wilson. And the Queen came by in a uh, in a convertible. So I have not met her personally. My brother Daniel has. Uh, or had, uh, but uh, I've never, I've never met her. I've never seen uh, Prince Charles, but I can tell you, uh, I, I've always been a monarchist. I'll tell you one other interesting anecdote. I remember my booby Sarah Kersner only planting Queen Elizabeth roses in her garden on Dubourn Avenue at 116 Dubourn. How's it going to feel to, um, we, we learned that the Canadian government is going to start replacing the Queen's image on the money. Uh, the coins first and the $20 bill. Did you, were you aware of that? Yeah. And in fact, I'm wearing uh, our brand new uh, pin with the insignia for uh, his majesty, King Charles III. Now, you know, you mentioned a lot about how you had to go down early and, and try to sort of accommodate the, the religious things that you needed to do in order to be there. Did you ever think of not doing it and not going? Uh, I, I can tell you that I made my mind up. I spoke to, I've had a number of opportunities, interestingly, Ellen, to attend events on a Shabbat. There was the, uh, the inauguration and installation of uh, Archbishop Leo, and they invited me to Archbishop Leo's uh, installation, and it was on a Shabbat. But it was down at, uh, uh, it, it was very far. It was long past the legislature. I just couldn't engineer it. But to sit outside and to be part of a Coronation 21 gun salute was something that I thought was important. And I discussed it with, with not only Rabbi Grossbaum, but, but many other uh, Rabunim here in the city. Uh, and, and they said, it's important for you to go. And, and you know what? You can make it happen. I, I was prepared, Alan, to walk the 14 kilometers. I didn't know what the weather would be like. The problem is I had to be there quite early. And uh, I, I, it wasn't fair to get a whole group of people walking with me down Bathurst Street, although that would have been fun. Were we able to do any services like shul on Saturday morning before or no? No, I davened I daven myself. It was... It was impossible given the timing. And interestingly as well, when the event was over, it was still Shabbat. So I walked up to my parents at St. Clair and Young. I had a couple of aides with me because they didn't want me walking alone. And it was also interesting that until I hit that DuPont area, you know, without being in an era, you can't put anything in your pockets. So, uh, so I had to have people hold my wallet and my keys. And this was a new experience for me. I've never walked on Shabbat that I recall out of an Arab. So it was an interesting experience. So you didn't say anything. You didn't speak, right? No, uh, they, I, was in, I was in pictures that they took because the crown ministers were asked to be in a picture. And again, you know, uh, they, they saw me with my kippah on and with my uh, king's lapel on. And, and, and that was fine. Listen, you know, in, in the end of the day, when you, as Rabbi Herbis said, when you're commanded by your monarch 
to, uh, to be part of something. And especially that the king himself has embraced so many faith leaders that it wasn't only Rabbi Mervis, but there were other faith leaders who attended at Westminster Abbey and really all across the Commonwealth. So, uh, so I'm, I'm really excited that, that I, in my small way here in Ontario, as the only Jewish cabinet minister, somebody that has never let my, um, uh, my religion wane because of my position, it was a great honor. UJA's Walk with Israel is happening this Victoria Day, Monday, May 22nd. Join thousands of community members for the world's largest Israel Solidarity Walk, followed by an epic Israeli-themed beach party to celebrate Israel's 75th birthday. Get all the details by visiting walkwithisrael.com. This is our moment to unite as one strong and proud Jewish community, religious and secular, left and right, Jews and allies. Everyone belongs at the Walk with Israel. Register before May 19th, and if you use the promo code CJN, you can save 10% on all Walk Bundle packages. To register, visit walkwithisrael.com. Manitoba's Lieutenant Governor Anita Neville met the king for about half an hour in his office in Buckingham Palace last Thursday. And she brought one of her three daughters with her for this Get to Know You interview as his official representative in Manitoba. Now, Neville is back in Canada. She had to come back to host coronation ceremonies in Winnipeg, so she didn't actually go to the ceremony in London. The Honourable Anita Neville joins me now from Government House in Winnipeg. Welcome back to the CJN Daily. Very nice to see you again, Ellen. Well, it's nice to see you. You've had quite the past week. We talked when you were just being sworn in, and now you get to present your credentials, your letter, official letter, whatever it's called, to King Charles. So we want to get all the scoop of the behind the scenes. I was there along with the Lieutenant Governor of Alberta. So both of us were there for our meetings, not together, And it was on the same day, I think, right? Same day. She followed me. So they didn't go alphabetically? No, they went by order of precedence because Manitoba entered Confederation before Alberta. That's why I went in first. That isn't a fun fact. That's very interesting. So was there a particular protocol regarding what you're allowed to bring and wear? No, um, there was no direction and certainly not in terms of what one wears. Uh, We knew that we were taking a gift for him and we went with many gifts because of circumstances. What you might find interesting is the week before I went uh, to London, the treaty commissioner here in Manitoba, along with the Council of Elders, had a special ceremony, a, a, a pipe ceremony and a water ceremony for me to bless me, wish me well, and by extension, the new monarch, um, as we begin a new uh, period of interaction between the Crown and the First Nations. It was a very fine uh, service. So they send you off with that. You said you brought a bunch of gifts. So what did you bring? Well, I've started, the reason I told you that is the Treaty Commissioner sent a set of books on the Manitoba Treaties We originally decided that we were going to take him the a tie and a shawl with the Manitoba tartan and then decided that we would add to it. I took him a book that I is very much in discussion here in Manitoba uh, called The Valley of the Bird Tail. And it's very much about reconciliation. So I took him a copy of the book And I took him two children's books written by an Indigenous author in Manitoba that have one, certainly, of the books has had great acclaim. Um, They're by Tasha Spillett's uh, Sumner. And uh, the first one was on the New York Times bestsellers list. They're children's books. They're beautiful books. And uh, we got them signed for him by the author, And I said, they're for you, your grandchildren, a library, whatever you choose. Um, And he seemed to be quite taken with them. So you get to London. Um, We met with him on Thursday, the 27th. Uh, We were greeted by an equerry at Buckingham Palace. Uh, Only I went in to see the king. But they invited my daughter in very graciously for the last two or three minutes. 
which was very special. So do you have to curtsy? What is what is the protocol? Or kiss the hand? Uh, I'm not sure what happens. <laughs> no, there's no kissing the hand. Um, I did not curtsy. I We had the option of curtsying or doing a bow. I did a deep bow, but there was hardly any time to do a deep bow because he put out his hand to me very quickly and um, was very gracious and invited me in and we sat down. So how much time did you get? I had a lot of time. I was budgeted for 20 minutes and I think I had about 35 or a bit more. It was We had a long conversation, good conversation. What did you have to talk about that you're allowed to tell us? We began at the beginning talking about COVID and the impact of COVID on life in general, and that was brief. We spent a fair bit of time talking about the Indigenous population, both here in Manitoba, specific to Manitoba, but a little bit broader. And it's very important to him. He had some questions of me. Um, We talked about the coronation itself his role in the coronation. We then talked about his concerns about the environment and some of the initiatives that were important to him. So did he give you anything? Yes, he did. He gave us a signed picture of himself and the Queen concert, a beautiful picture which we now have set up at Government House. So were you nervous? I was very nervous prior to it. Once I was in the room, I felt like I was talking to an old friend. Well, he's not that much younger than you are, you know. Um, He's not. We're very much of the same generation. Did he know you were Jewish and did that come up? It did not come up, but I am quite certain that he did know that I was Jewish. Just don't ask me how, but I know that I am certain because he knew enough about me. And so... The last thing, I guess, is, you know, your takeaway, your impressions of him. Did you get any feeling about, is he ready or how does he handle, how does he assume this, any of that? I certainly did. He is ready. I think he has known his whole life that this was going to be part of his life and whatever preparation. I saw the um, interview with Princess Anne last night on CBC. I don't know whether you saw it. And she made that comment as well. But I think for my brother, you know, this is something he's been waiting for. And he's probably spent more time thinking about it. Um, For the rest of us, it's more a question of, okay, we have to shift the way we support. And that's, that's what we need to do. But I certainly had the understanding from him that he was ready, he was prepared. Uh, It was something that he knew would be part of his life when he didn't know. But, um, yeah, so he was ready. He's ready. And I guess what I would say about him, what I have done is I've read a number of articles, particularly on his concerns for the environment, And he was 30 years ahead of his time. You know, at at one point he was dismissed as being a little off the wall. He was well ahead of his time in terms of many of his initiatives, many of much of his thinking. And even as we spoke um, when I was there, he's very much a visionary and... He is deeply concerned about the environment and the health of the of the earth. So um, I think I think he's going to be a very fine king. Did you get any souvenir chachkas when you were there? Not from him, but I mean, like in the streets of like pictures of, on cups or what have you that to bring back to your family as gifts. <laughs> I bought one mug. Um, I didn't buy very many. I didn't find a lot of tchotchkes. Bought a lovely cup and saucer to put in the cupboard here. Um, but I didn't do a lot of shopping. I bought primarily sweatshirts for my grandchildren. And what did they say on them? London. Oh, so my grandmother went to London at the coronation and all she got was this lousy T-shirt, right? You've got it. You've got it. I guess lastly, you know, there are there are sort of two camps in Canada, the younger people, maybe a little bit more blasé about the monarchy here, whereas uh, people of a certain older generation have 
more warmer feelings because they remember the queen and 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 her father even so i wonder how how you see any of that are you hearing any of that i'm thinking about that i i'm not quite sure younger people that i speak to about my trip and the fact that i was going or i've come back have been very intrigued and excited now that's a small sample i don't know that one can make the broad generalization that the older people care and the younger people don't because i think there are a lot of younger people who do care i think there's a lot of younger people who are particularly attracted to william and kate and that certainly um it, it excites them i think as people get to know him better and see how contemporary he is in his thinking and really how visionary he is in his thinking there will be a great deal of admiration for him no corgis you didn't see corgis i didn't <laughs> see a single corgi it, it was a it was a wonderful trip um and as i say we floated out of there it was very exciting did you wish him muzzle tov no i didn't at the end i wished him well in the coronation indicated that i hope the day went smoothly for him and indicated that we would all be watching here i debated getting a fascinator but one of my daughters said i'd look ridiculous so <laughs> love it all right thank you so much again it's been great to have you back congratulations <laughs> And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout-out goes to Naomi Azrieli, who I met last night at a gala fundraising dinner for the Sheba Medical Center in Tel Aviv. And we'll end the show with his update on the story that we did about that 14-year-old Israeli-born singer from Canada, Maya Gamzu, that competed on Canada's Got Talent, well, she got to the semifinals last week, but that's where her season ended. She didn't go through to the finals. The teen says she's grateful to have had the opportunity and she'll continue to work on improving her voice. Thanks for listening to the CJN Daily. Mm-hmm.